Is Palantir a trillion dollar company? Yes or no? Tom Nash says, da, Jackson from Palantir Vision says, nah, but who is actually right? Well, to understand that first, you need to understand what is a trillion dollar share price, right? And I want to walk you through the data so you are the best informed Palantir investor out there. But before we get into that, do you want to know how I made 126% return on capital in 2022, 105% in 2023, and so far up 15% this year. If the answer to that is I am slightly curious, then come and learn the three simple trading, trading rules that I use for like two to three hours a week. That's all I do. And I will teach you the complete setup, the automations, all of it. Come and join me at felixfriends.org slash webinar this coming, I want to say Tuesday. But check it out, Felix Rents at Oxlash webinar. Now, what's that trillion dollar share price? Well, a trillion dollar share price for Palantir is about $388. Okay, so far, you're with me. That's quite a lot more than it's what it's worth right now. So what's the simplest way to actually value a stock? Well, there is really only one thing for it, and I'm going to put it on the screen here for you, and that is you do the following. You take sales, which is the same thing as revenue, by the way. It's just a fancier name, revenue is. And you multiply that by some number. Yeah, that's literally how, how, how scientific stock valuations are. Now, what is that some number? Well, the some number, you can look at where it is right now. So Palantir right now has a multiple, a sales multiple of about 38x, which is pretty high. It was higher at some point, but it's still pretty high. Something like a Microsoft, which is a very successful software company. You might hate them and all of that, you know, but fundamentally, it's a very profitable software company. They have a 40x multiple. Why so much lower? Because people don't expect for Microsoft to like double tomorrow, whereas a Palantir, at least some of us have that hope. So that's basically how you do that. So what data do you then need for this? Well, let me pop this on the screen here for you so you can see this as, as, as large as possible. What have you got? I've got on here the pesky dilution question, and I've set this at 2%. Right now, it's more than that but buybacks are kicking in. So I think it could be 2%, could even be a little bit less. We then have the future number of shares that'll be out there based on that 2% dilution and some buybacks. So about two and a half billion shares. And then all you're going to do is basically take that $1 trillion and divide it by this number and you get to approximately 380 of the, the green stuff. So what does that mean? What, what, what growth do you then need to actually hit a trillion dollars? Well, if you were to go to, say, 43% growth per year for the next 10 years, yeah, then you would need a multiple here on the left, price over sales, of about 14.15 to get there. So a Microsoft valuation with 43% growth would get us there. What if Palantir starts to really grow at, again at these 30, 40% levels, but we still think the future is bright and it's all going to get better and better. And maybe you could get that insane valuation it has right now at 38 and that might continue in five years and 10 years. Well, yeah, then it could in theory become a $2 trillion company. But do I think that's realistic? Well, just look at my chart here and, and where are you? Where are you on this chart? Well, you are in the extreme corner on the right. That's the bullish corner. And then you also have the extreme bearish corner on the left and the realist, the sort of not completely bonkers, you know, drank too much Alex Carp juice in the morning is probably more somewhere in the middle here. So somewhere in this glorious middle is more likely where the stock's going to end up because it's just more probable. 
it's more probable that companies do well, but not exceedingly well. And it's also more likely they do well than they're completely implode, at least when they're at this level of profitability and so on. So I would say we are more likely to end up in the 60s, 70s, maybe $100, maybe $120 than at the $380 anytime soon. So what side am I on? I guess I'm kind of more with Jackson on this, to be honest with you. And it's nice to run these things through. And I did a video to walk you through the real data again on this. But you got to separate the dream bull scenario from what would I be happy and content with. You've got to invest in a stock with a happy and content, more realistic outcome, and then let it surprise you when it does more. But don't go into it with like, I have to reach $300, $500, $600 on the share price, because you're going to hold on to it beyond the optimum. And what do I mean by that? Well, Peter Thiel, right? One of the largest investors in Palantir. He sold 7 million shares or something like that a week or so ago. And why does he do that? Is he a, is he a snowflake? Is he, is he given up on Palantir? No. He invested in Palantir to make money. And I would ask yourself, why are you investing in this stock if you are or in any stock to make money? So you got to have an exit plan and you got to write that down. you got to have a notebook that has that written down, what that rule is. And actually, you want to set it up inside your brokerage and automate it. And the way I trade, the way we make money every single week is by having those rules written out and having them automated. And if you want to learn that, I'll teach you that completely for free. Join me on the webinar and I'll show you not just the rules, but actually how I implement them. And all the most successful investors and traders have an exit rule. They don't just go, let's go all in. I love it. We're going to hold on till death do us part. No, it's not the smart thing to do. The smart thing to do is to set yourself that exit. So I'm going to probably lose uh, half the Palantir community over this. Phoenix isn't in with us till the end. No, probably not. I'm in it until the ideal situation has materialized where I exit. And that's, you've got to define what that is for you. Is it a certain gain? Is it revenue slowing? Is it the pipeline slowing down? Is it, you know, what, what is it for you? What's the number? It's got to be a number, not some weird ass gut feeling because you can't define that. You've got to define it in a number. Let me know what that number is for you in the comments. And if you disagree with me, and you agree with Tom Nash, also let me know in the comments down below. And you know what? I'd love to have Tom and Jackson on the channel, like go into any channel, and, and let's, let's, let's debate this. Three people are usually smarter than one, certainly smarter than this one. So guys, if you're tuning in and you're still watching at the end, me driveling on, then um, message me and, and, and we'll set that up. It'd be brilliant. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Kathy Wood's saying that Palantir is going to beat it, Microsoft and others in this race, and actually become a ginormous AI company.